the hand would have played completely different. Um, but, uh, you know, that's the way it is. You know, I didn't have to lose the hand. I still had some outs at about 10 wins still. And, um, you know, I missed. Okay, well, we appreciate you playing, Phil. Thank you. Chris, take us through your thought process. Why did you make that call? Well, it was a, it was a really tough call. I didn't like making that call at all. Um, my thought process was even even if I'm in bad shape, I'm putting, maybe he has jacks or he's, he hit a nine, I'm, I figured I got two outs at least. And here it heads up now, making the finals three out of four years. It's pretty good. You're keeping your streak alive. That's pretty good. I, I hope to improve on my previous performances. All right. Well, good luck in the finals. Thank you guys for playing. Thanks, Leanne. Well, Chris made a good call of Phil's all-in, and now he gets a shot at redemption. Chris can help us answer the age-old question, is the third time really a charm? Welcome back to the National Heads Up Poker Championship at Caesars Palace. Well, Chris Ferguson put a stamp all over this event the first two years, and this year, he's done it again. Chris beat Phil Ivey and advanced to the finals for the third time in four years. Let's go over to the Huck Seed Andy Block match. Thanks, Leanne. Andy now with a small chip lead with the blind still at two and four thousand. And he like double paired the board on me. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that. King six for Andy. Uh, Nine thousand. Okay. And he raises to 9,000. I mean, you were, you were in such a great shape, though. I mean, they were laying down to you so much to your raises. Yeah. I mean, you can well play without looking at your cards. Just raise them. If they, fold, if they re raise, you fold and you would have made money. With his ace, Trey Huck calls. Both players appear remarkably relaxed as we hear them chat about Huck's 96 main event championship. Eight, queen, oh, seven on the flop. Huck has checked. Andy bets 10,000, and Huck quickly folds his hand. Sometimes you'll see players get tempted to call with ace high there. Just such a disconnected flop for Huck's hand. Good check fold for him. Blinds going up here to three and 6,000. Andy continues with a slight chip advantage here. Jack four for Huck. He calls. Queen eight for Andy, who checks. And the flop is Trey King eight, middle pair for Andy. Big air ball for Huck Seed. It's not going to stop him from trying to pick up the pot, however. Huck bets out, and Andy calls. And the turn pairs Huck's four. Now, that could have got Huck to bet on the turn, but he's giving Andy credit for an eight or a king here. Two quick checks, a ten of hearts on the river. Andy bets 10,000. I was considering betting my hand if you check, but I should have checked. And Huck lays it down. Probably. Probably should have. I thought about it. Andy counting his chips from that pot, a far cry from his days as a card counter on the mysterious MIT Blackjack team. The MIT Blackjack team wasn't an officially sanctioned MIT activity. It was basically a group of people that were set out to form a business. We would go and train people to play blackjack in casinos. 100% legal what we did. You're able to figure out when the deck is favorable to the player, and then you swoop in and you make big bets. The problem is, of course, eventually the casinos catch on. They start kicking you out. We probably made about $10 million. Ten million. Uh, if the casinos indeed caught on, I'd say they did so a little late. Yeah, kind of like our music library there. What was that? The eighty-two Billboard Top One Hundred. <laughs> Huey Lewis. My God. We're down to three now. We're in the top three. We made it in the final three. Huck and Andy trying to convince themselves that they finished ahead of Phil Ivey. Well, that's irrelevant. If they get knocked out here, they will win one hundred and twenty-five thousand. But if they can stop patting themselves on the back, they'll have a shot at a quarter million or a half million for first. A big flop here. Andy flops a pair, but trip nines for Huck. Neither player wants to fire a bet on the flop. Ace of diamonds on the turn. 6,000. Andy bets 6,000. Huck puts in a raise to 22. Now, it could look to Andy like Huck is trying to buy this pot. And Andy folds his hand. Good bluff. Well, there's Andy trying to get information about the hand, and while Huck is chatty in between the action, he's definitely unwilling to disclose anything. Yeah. 
10-9 for Andy. He calls. Ooh, and big slick for Huck. He's going to put in a raise to 30,000. 20 more. Andy makes a quick call. Andy limps on the button. Huck raises. 60,000 in the pot Huck going to the flop. Up. And both players get a piece of this. Nines for Andy, but a pair of aces for Huck. Top pair of top kicker top is going to fire 000. here. 25,000. Andy calls. Andy quickly calls. And the turn brings a third ace. Trips for Huck seed. This is going to make it that much harder for Andy to put Huck, Huck on an ace. Andy checks. And that's a slippery check from Huck seed. Andy does not fall for it, however, as he checks aces up. Rivers of five of diamonds. Check. Huck checks again. Checks. Andy checks. once again checks, and Huck takes down the pot. I didn't want to check this down. <laughs> Oops. Were you out if I bet the turn? Depends on what you bet, but uh, probably. Well, I mean, the ace. I mean, makes it less likely you have an ace, but makes it. So you have the five. If you have an ace, I'm drawing dead. So that's the Some post-hand analysis from the MIT grad, but it's Huck Seed who has taken the lead. The Pussycat Dolls Casino just a few steps away from the poker room at Caesars. Welcome back inside. Still playing blackjack? Not often. Not at, not in any any place that I've Do you enjoy poker. playing, or is it just like when some friend wants to play? No, I mean I I, I, yeah, I enjoy playing. I mean sometimes it's fun. You get you get a chance to. Vonage Heads Up Pocket Cam shows us eights, a pair of eights for Huck Seed, who will raise to 50,000 with the blinds up to eight and 16,000. Suited A6 for Andy. Call. He makes the call. 100,000 in the pot already. And Andy has paired his ace on the flop, seven ace tray. This is the kind of flop you actually hate to see if you're Huck Seed, but you gotta bet. Having raised pre-flop and having position on your opponent, you don't want to just check here. Got to take a shot. Andy checked. Huck bet 45,000. Andy calls. Turns a five of spades. Andy picks up a gut shot straight draw. Not that he needs it. His aces are in the lead. And he checks once more over to Huck, who decides he's not up against a seven as he checks his eights. And now Andy has trip aces. Huck knows this card makes it that much less likely that Andy has an ace in his hand. Fun, isn't this poker? It's kind of fun, isn't it? It's pretty fun, this poker, isn't it? <laughs> Andy has bet 80,000. Yeah. Getting these situations, does he have it or not, you know? Everything got there, I mean. Well, Huck decides Andy does have it, and he lays it down. You know, we heard earlier about Andy's exploits on the MIT Blackjack team. Now he tells us just how hard it was to secure a spot. The MIT team had several different levels of tests, knowing how to play, knowing how to play and count at the same time and control your betting, and we used to have very tough checkouts. You'd have to play five shoes with two or three counting mistakes allowed. Minor betting mistakes, no strategy mistakes. You have to do this all while people are trying to distract you. It could be people coming over and, and talking to you and asking you about your name and your social security number and things with numbers. There's nobody in the history of the MIT Blackjack team that passed the test the first time around. You know, Matt, I heard a rumor that the hazing practices involved an abacus, a Bunsen burner, and a Rubik's cube. <laughs> Huck with pocket fives. Come on, Lynn. And he moves all in. <laughs> so far, you're in pretty good shape. <laughs> From the deuce, Andy squeezes a king <laughs> and mucks his hand. What are you going to do if the other one was a deuce? I mean, you might have called it. <laughs> and I, then I get a sick feeling, and I'm like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of a tough, that's a sick it's not, it's, it, but you know. I mean, obviously, somebody that's 16. You know, I guess, I guess somebody that's raising every hand, I'm going to have to call. Andy leads the match 371,000 to 